Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager, and thanks for joining us for this edition of Global Wrestling News. We start with big news out of the Ukraine. After reaching the finals in each of the past two years, Team Titan Mercury just captured the World Club's Cup. Here to recap the finals, Titan Mercury Wrestling Club's media director, Johnny Ruggiano. Thanks, Scott and Tony. This is Johnny Ruggiano from Titan Mercury Wrestling Club in sunny Southern California. Now, the team has been in the freezing cold all week long, but it was worth it. I'm super excited to let everybody know Titan Mercury can now be called the best wrestling club in the world. That's right. We faced the best teams in the world at the World Clubs Cup, and we came out victorious. We wrestled a tough Bimarazi from Iran in the finals, and the former world champions brought the best that they had against us, and we had a barn burner on our hands. At 57 kilos, we saw a very, very tough match for Nico Megaludis and Hassan Rahimi of Iran. The Iranian bronze medalist from Rio brought everything that he had to our Titan Mercury wrestler and came up victorious 5-2. Megaludis went undefeated the entire week until the finals and he gave us everything that he has. That's the type of attitude that we expected and we saw from our Titan Mercury wrestlers and that's the reason why we won. At 61 kilos, Titan Mercury brought in Georgian Olympic gold medalist Vladimir Kingilishvili, and he wrestled Iran's Ishmaelpour. It was an extremely odd match where we saw both of them get disqualified because of some, I would say, what you could call flopping in soccer. At the end of the match, Ishmaelpour, after being tapped on the face by Kingilishvili, just flopped to the ground and acted as if he was hurt. The referees deemed both of the wrestlers disqualified, and we ended up seeing the match not count. At the beginning, the disqualification seemed to be unadvantageous for Titan Mercury. However, it played a major part at the end of the match. Instead of wrestling eight contested bouts, we now were in a match of seven. And at 65 kilos, unfortunately, BJ Futrell gave everything that he could, but we saw a quick tech from the Russian who wrestled for Iran, and now Titan Mercury was down zero to two. It wasn't until 70 kilos where Nazar Kolchitsky for Titan Mercury ended up bringing up the speed and bringing up the heat. Kolchitsky had a rough first day, actually as the only Titan Mercury wrestler who was one in two. However, when it came into that finals match, Nazar really put on a show, came up big with the win, and we were now one and two against Iran. At 74 kilos, we saw Alex Derringer wrestle a very challenging Iranian opponent, and unfortunately for Derringer, he started off just a little bit flat and timid. And the Iranian wrestler capitalized off of it, hitting him with a blast double and getting a four. It wasn't until the second period where Derringer got a push out and then right at the final seconds of the match, he capitalized off of the takedown, got a gut wrench, and he won the bout for us. Titan Murphy came up with a huge win there and now we're tied two to two. At 86 kilos, David Taylor found himself against Ali Reza Karimi. Now Karimi was a former silver medalist for Iran and the guy wrestled very, very tough. At the beginning of the bout, Karimi came out with two very fast. However, Taylor turned it into a USA style bout and brought in big scrambles and great counter wrestling to go in and take the win. At 97 kilos, Kyle Snyder took on Tahan of Iran. Now the match didn't go the way that we thought it was going to go and the Olympic champion fell. But I can tell you right now that everybody at Titan Mercury has 100% faith that our wrestlers, especially Kyle, are only going to get better and only improve, and when it matters most, they're going to deliver. After the first seven matches, Titan Mercury and Rossi were tied going into the final bout, and Iran brought one of their power athletes in Hadi. Now, we brought Nick Gwizdowski, two-time NCAA champion, but a guy who's had relatively limited international experience. The odds were in the favor of Rossi, but Titan Mercury is never down and out. Nick Gwizdowski and Hadi found themselves in a flurry of different leg attacks where we saw tons of great defensive wrestling and tons of great offensive wrestling. However, at the end, with just a short 40 seconds left, Gwizdowski got the last two takedown and fought off Hadi to win the bout and win the entire match for Titan Mercury Wrestling Club. 
Now the beauty of this gold metal performance from Titan Mercury was that it wasn't ran by one single wrestler. This was a group effort and every single member of the team played an integral part in this championship. From 57 kilos all the way up to 125, Titan Mercury wrestlers gave the blood, sweat, and tears that you expect from a championship team. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen with this young cohort of wrestlers in the future, and the future looks extremely bright for USA Wrestling and Titan Mercury. Next week, we'll follow up with you guys again as two Titan Mercury wrestlers, Logan Stever and James Green, will be in Budapest, Hungary for the World Championships and looking for a chance to claim gold. Until then, Scott and Tony, back to you. So they came away with the team title, Tony, but are you concerned about Kyle Snyder taking a couple of losses? Yeah, I don't, not at all. I mean, we saw him take some losses last summer leading up into Rio, but he got it done then. So you also have to factor in that he's a full-time student too, so and training folk style. So I'm not going to take a lot of you know away from this going overseas. Not easy to do. All right, we got Johnny's overall thoughts on the duels. What about yours? Well, I think Nico Megalutis is right there. He gave up some big points on the edge. The double DQ right there, that was kind of a head scratcher. I ran, I mean, he just flopped, almost kind of like a soccer match or basketball that you're seeing, so I wasn't surprised to see the DQ. Nazar, Alex picked up huge late points to pick up the wins. David Taylor, Gwizdowski did the same. Overall, it was just a really gritty performance. A lot of fans have just really kind of, kind of become accustomed to the United States laying down when they compete overseas. But... They came from behind in almost all their matches. Huge props for them going overseas and picking up the win. All right, my take on this. Overall, this is how you build a USA team. Tight Mercury Wrestling Club, Andy Barth, Wayne Boyd, uh, Melina Wick, everybody at Tight Mercury Wrestling, along with USA Wrestling, okay, they are setting the table for future success for Team USA. All right, like Johnny said, the World Championships are around the corner, and we're going to sit down with Team USA after the break. You're watching GWN, powered by McBride Matt. Stay tuned. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. Well, on December 10th, six Americans will take to the mats in Budapest, Hungary, home of the first non-Olympic weight world championships. USA Wrestling's Richard Emmel and Taylor Miller stop by the OTC to talk with the athletes, starting with first-time Greco World Team member Christopher Gonzalez. It's definitely been a long journey. Um, I started like four years ago. I went up to northern Michigan. Um, I had Coach Rob Herman and uh, Coach Agassi Manukian up there, really good coaching. Um, I credit a lot of my... Uh, 
fundamentals and just basic wrestling skills to them. Good partners up there as well. Um, I was there for four years. I had I had a little bit of success. I was all American. Uh, I want to say three times. Um, I was always right there with the top guys. Just you know, I just I could just never get over that hump. And um, you know, I moved out here to Colorado Springs just to kind of take it to the next level. I just feel like with the elevation and uh, you know some different coaching staff, some new partners, I could uh, make that turn. And um, you know, I've just been training real hard. You know, I was working a full-time job too, and um, you know, I just made sacrifices, doing the little things right, focusing on, uh, you know, all the stuff that I wasn't focused on while I was in Marquette. You know, I was allowing myself to be distracted and things like that. Um, you know, just making sacrifices, and it paid out. Went to New York, had a pretty good tournament, and uh, here we are. I think it would be impossible for either of us to evaluate Chris at this point, having talked with the guys at Five Point Move. What did they have to say about Gonzalez? Gonzalez doesn't have a ton of international experience, but he has big wins domestically. He's been wrestling at 66. Now he's up at 71, so not a, a big weight cut. So he's really, really molded into this weight class. You know, the idea of him bringing home a medal from the World Championships just isn't really good. I think, you know, in the future, his his team that he has around him, his resources, really can maybe get him there in the future. But I'd be shocked if he brings home from the World Championships this year. Well, another rising Greco star, Patrick Martinez, will represent the U.S. at 80 kilos. Wrestling international opponents, uh, it's a whole different field when you get here in the U.S. Uh, so it's something that I need to work on if I want to be the best in the world. And, you know, that's, that's what I set out to do this summer was to... Uh, you know, further my skills against international opponents and against foreigners. And uh, hopefully that all comes together here at the World Championships in Budapest. You have a short turnaround until the World Championships. What are you focusing on until then? Um, that's a good question. Um, a few little minor adjustments here and there, but uh, I'm feeling in great shape. I'm healthy. Uh, you know, nothing too, nothing too big. You know, just kind of keep what I'm doing. Talk about the difference that you felt wrestling at 80 kilos as opposed to 85 earlier this year. Yeah, uh, 80 kilos, I feel I feel better at 80 kilos actually. I feel faster, I feel a lot bigger than anybody at that weight class, stronger. So uh, for right now, 80 kilos is definitely my spot and uh, in the U.S. and hopefully in the world here soon. Much higher expectations for Martinez. Can he capitalize? He's probably the United States' best threat to medal since Bisic has been around. He's now his third year training full time. So this is a if, if we have a shot, he's our guy. All right, with Robbie Smith and Andy Bisic on the way out, we need Martinez and Thilke to take over that leadership role. Yeah, Martinez is a top six guy in the world, but in order to medal, he will have to be a lot more effective in the center, be able to control the center, take a lot more risk, which he has just not been able to do in the past. So if he if he he wants to bring home a medal, he's going to have to let it fly. Well, former college teammates will represent the U.S. in women's freestyle. Here's Sarah Hildebrandt and Allie Reagan. We're here with Allie Reagan, our world team member at 60 kilos. Allie, talk about, you had a second place finish at the Olympic trials. Um, talk about what you learned from that. Um, I was actually really unsure if I was even going to keep wrestling after that happened. So I was like, I took a whole summer off and I think to really reflect and see where I wanted to go with like life in general. Cause I mean, a cycle is four years. So that's a big commitment. And then after I took the summer off, I did a little coaching, like volunteering, stuff like that for Fargo, those girls. And I just like really laid low and really decided what I wanted to do these next four years. So once I for sure knew that I wanted to do this again, that's when I like totally committed and I was like, okay, well, wrestling, my wrestling is going to need to change. I can't be the same wrestler as I was the past cycle. So, and it'll, cause if that happened, it was going to just like lead to the same, like, un, like no passion really was in my wrestling when it came down to like the past couple of years. So really once I found that passion again, I think that's where it led me to wanting to compete again and keep wrestling. So once I found that, it was really important. I actually took the entire summer off, like, like four months and I think that was really really beneficial for me uh, because I was so excited to get on the mat whereas you know towards the end of the cycle last year things were becoming mundane and it was like wow I'm really beat down whereas now I was really pumped up to go into practice so I think that was a big deal and then just having fun at practice versus like putting too much pressure on myself and uh, I think that was a really big deal for me. 
All right, let's start with Allie Reagan. Very consistent domestically, Tony, but very inconsistent internationally. She's a veteran for the United States at this group. This will be her fourth senior world championship, but now she's up a weight class at 60 kilograms to make this team. We don't know how she will fare at that weight class, but if she is going to want to bring home a medal for this team, she's going to have to find some shots because right now it's a lot of defense and a lot of counter. So find the shots. She can bring home a medal. She's a veteran. She should know how to get this done. She's got coaches around her to make it happen. Lots of training from now until then. And Terry Steiner is hot on her as well. I think it's tremendous. Let's talk about Hildebrandt. If she wrestles as well as she did at the trials, sky for her, Tony, is the limit. I've got high hopes for her. Yeah, Condor is a little pit bull. So for Hildebrandt to go in and tech her, Shows that she's healthy, shows that she's ready to compete at the world level. So very few women put up those big points. So I like Hilda Brandt. I've liked her phase, for a, right? yeah, I've liked her for a while. All right. How about James Green and Logan Steber not training in Colorado Springs, but where do you see these guys finishing? Now, before the trials, I wouldn't put much stock in Steber. But after that performance, I like him to contend for a medal. This is a great weight class for him. Not too big of a cut, not too big of guys that he's competing. But Green, he's the guy that I think is the biggest favorite we have. Obviously, he brought home a medal last year. So if he doesn't come home with a medal, it will be disappointing. How many medals? I'm going to be optimistic and say four. Steber, Green, Hildebrandt, Martinez. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, I think that is very optimistic, very doable. I don't want to say who I think will bring home a medal, but realistically, I, I do think we're going to bring home two, maybe three medals from the World Championships. College Wrestling News after the break. This portion brought to you in part by our friends at Adidas Wrestling. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Welcome back to GWN. The UNI Open in Cedar Falls and the Cliff Keen Invitational are events, surely, that are going on, but that doesn't take us away from the must-watch duels of the weekend. Let's take a look at the top five must-watch matches. Yeah, Josh Rodriguez of NDSU will be taking on Freddie Rodriguez of SIUE on Sunday. Josh, number seven, and Freddie, number 13. Who are you taking here, Scott? I don't know a lot about Freddie, but I'm going to take the guy on paper. At least that is number seven. Yeah, I like this matchup. I mean, the number seven guy, Josh, great, great position here, but Freddie Rodriguez, he's a former Former Juco national champ, stepping up to Division One, which I always love to see. Picked up a few wins in uh, New York City, but didn't really burst on the scene. Didn't have a big win. This is the win for him. A top 10 guy could propel him into that maybe top eight All-American status, a look into uh, St. Louis. All right, another bout that hits our top five, Cade Brock. He'll be taking on number eight, Dom Forres from Pittsburgh. Brock blew out Minnesota's Mitch McKee, if you recall, by a major decision just last weekend. Can he make an even bigger statement against Forres? Yeah, Brock actually is now ranked above Dom, but this match would show that last week was not a fluke for the freshman. Dom was in the round of 12 last year, and he's been on fire early. After watching Brock's match against McKee, I think this kid is a top contender at, at a very, very difficult weight class. Look for Brock to win a dogfight here. 
Number three on this week's list is number five, Matt Kalodzik of Princeton, taking on the number 10 ranked Colton McChrystal in Nebraska. Kalodzik is red hot with victories over Anthony Ashnold and Logan Everett. Whose stock is higher right now, Tony, Kalodzik or McChrystal? I think Kalodzik. He, he's red hot, but so is McChrystal here. So he took down Wyoming returning national finalist Bryce Meredith in a, a few weeks back here. So this sets up to have some absolute fireworks. This is going to be one of the better matchups of the weekend in our top five. I like Kalodzik to take this one. All right, next up, number four, Darren Cruz of Lehigh will look to hold his spot in the rankings over number five, Nick Suriano of Penn State. Suriano is a type of a kid that had a ton of buzz around him in recruiting and is showing it was an all hype. Yeah, Suriano knocking off all Americans early into this freshman season. He has another opportunity to knock off another one here in Darren Cruz. Nick is the opposite of Nico Megalutis for Penn State fans. He's a guy that goes and tries to get the takedown nonstop. Nico Megalus was really, I think, a defensive wrestler, so Suriano, the buzz is here. The hype is real. All right, it's time for the number one bout of the week. You don't want to miss it. This match has all the hype around it, and if we know Bona, it'll be a spectacle in South Dakota on Friday. Iowa's number one, Corey Clark, takes on South Dakota State's number six, Seth Gross. Gross has spent time at 149, but he's down at 141. Gross spent time at Iowa and was dismissed. It has rivalry written all over it. Yeah, it, you know, if 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 this match does go down, I've, I've got some inside information that Clark might be out, so we'll see if uh, Iowa does send him out there. I know that he's going to, to, to weigh in, but yes, this is a rivalry in the making, especially with Gross and Iowa. Both of these guys are great on their feet, but if Clark can get on top of Gross, it's going to be over. He's the guy on top. He he turns guys. I don't think he can turn Gross, but he can control the match. He can slow it down so Gross can't take him on their feet. All right, Tony, we've got to take quick time out. When we come back, it'll be quick hits. You're watching GWN Powered by Nike Wrestling. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. All right, welcome back to GWN, and it's time for your quick hits of the week, brought to you in part by Cookie's Barbecue Sauce. Let's start first with Michigan. It seems like half of their roster was redshirted, but somehow they've not only gone undefeated, now they're one of the top teams in the country. Tony, top 10? Yeah, big wins over Oregon State, Oklahoma already. I, I feel like McFarland was really on the hot seat a few years back. But that's really long gone. They have a monster recruiting class coming in next season. Andrew Davison, top 50 recruit. Embry, top 25 recruit. Drew Matten, uh, Van Anroy, all top 50 recruits. And they have more coming that are going to commit to coach. So this is a – they're building. They're building something. And there's a reason why they had red shirts this year. Great coaching staff up there led by Joe McFarland, the old Silver Fox. And what a tremendous coach he has turned out to be. All right, Tony, I asked you this just a couple weeks ago. And I want to ask you again. With Kuhn, Sutton, Pantaleo, Abinator back in the lineup, can Michigan compete for a title? I guess you could say that they could be a top contender. They're going to be in the top, maybe in the top, top five. But Penn State, they're going to be huge favorites. They will be in the mix, but to me, it's Penn State's maybe this year and for sure next year to, to lose. 
All right, let's go to East Lansing. Michigan State started the Roger Chandler era with a pair of road victories against Bloomsburg and Lock Haven. Now, it's the first time the Spartans have started 2-0 since 2010. I don't know about you, Tony, but I'm feeling pretty optimistic about Michigan State right now. Yeah, I think anyone that is a Michigan State fan is on the same boat that you are. Everyone questioned why they would hire internally here, and I think you have your answer. You know, still feel, though, that they're going to have to get a big splash, a big hire if they want to compete with Penn State, Michigan, you know, especially you know with how hot Michigan is right now in the recruiting. So getting those guys in state will be difficult unless they make a big splash. All the AD there is looking for is a little improvement each and every season. It will help with recruiting, and you, you know as well as I do, recruiting, man, when you get those big names into that room, it starts a snowball effect. Speaking of a snowball effect, Iowa State with the top recruiting class picked up their very first win of the year last Friday. But just 24 hours later, they fell to Wyoming. Well, the Cyclones are now 1-3 and three on the year and quickly losing ground in the Big 12. What's going on with the Cardinal and Gold, Tony? Lots and lots of questions surrounding this lineup. Injuries. Marcus Simmons didn't make weight. Dane Pistano didn't make weight. How that happens at this level is beyond me. I mean, Bistano is coming down for 184 pounds, so I'll, I'll let him off the hook here. But there's got to be there's got to be something going on. These guys got to be focused. There's got to be somebody in their ear. They got to make weight. This is Division One wrestling. All right, both of us love Kevin Jackson, but Iowa State fans, I'm sure, are getting tired of waiting for next year. This team has got to figure it out, and fast. The schedule's not going to get any easier. As a matter of fact, they're facing Iowa just next week. Yeah, Iowa, Iowa State fans aren't happy, but it's what happens in March that counts. We saw them do this last year. They didn't have a very good you know, season, but they, they came home with a lot more All-Americans that were expected. So they got to get this lineup figured out. they got to get the injuries. they got to get Pat Downey in the lineup if they want to compete at the Big 12. All right, I've heard that enough. Uh, it always matters in March. Of course it does, but along the way, it's a good idea to win a few. All right, we're out of time. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching Global Wrestling News. We'll see you next week.